Do, do I want you to Hello, go? Hello, and welcome to Rise in Red King. We're glad you're watching <laughs> us on replay on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Hashtag replay below, and let us know where you're watching from. We love you guys watching on replay. I'm not going to lie, America. I don't think you can lie. I mean... Oh. In, I can lie. No, Done not, it before. Not under these. Did it to you this morning. Not under these circumstances. What do you mean? Well, when the facts are in front of people, you can't really lie. No, <laughs> no, I still can. Um, good morning, everybody. I wanted to tell you guys that just moments before we went live, um, I looked into this camera and was startled. Because in my bathroom, I don't know if I've been given some fake lighting in there. Maybe but I have trick lighting in there for you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was stunning in my bathroom. I was. Were I you, looked at... Ah, 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 were you ah, stunning ah. or were you stunned? <laughs> no. I was stunned when I looked into this camera. But in the bathroom, my hair looked wild and tussled as if... As if I had just been doing something active. And my my skin was glowing. And I think that's because I've not been wearing makeup for days and days and days. And so my skin is really good right now. And I was like, Melissa, look at you. You can pull this off. You know what, today, all you need is a robe and a nightgown on, Melissa. That's all. And I do have on a nightgown. It looks like I don't, but I do. That's all you need. And then I came in here and I turned this on and I was stunned at how I look. And I, I feel like it looks like I just rolled out of bed. But um, I didn't. I've been up to stunned with Melissa Red. But I, I didn't roll out of just roll out of bed. I've been sitting up. I've been checking the news. I've been watching the Today Show. And then right before we go live, Remy, who's in the kitchen, say hi, Remy. Hi. Says, Mom, do you want me to go get you some different clothes to put on? <laughs> I don't. I don't want. David, I don't know what you're going to do, but it's going to be a bad idea on your part. Turn the air down. That's oh. oh, he's turning the air down. I thought he was going to go get me a hat to put on. So anyway, mm -hmm. welcome to Rise and Radke, where we don't look like this every day, but most days we do. And um, y'all are saying good morning. We look just like they do. Now granted, they're not putting themselves out there like this. Mm -hmm. They're not having people, what's today? We're here for you Wednesday. Uh -huh. They're not having people put their lives and their situations in our hands and looking like this. Y'all, Sharon Miller just said she did her braid yesterday. I'm so glad, I'm glad it turned out. You've got mascara or something under your eye. David, that can't be. I've not worn mascara in days, so whatever you just wiped off my face. Was not mascara. Um, anyway, what I was going to say is, I remember the very first Facebook Live I ever did. I did it about four days after Red Ribbon Week had come out. Okay? My little bitty, Insta my little bitty Facebook account had gone up. Um, it had gone from 1,200 followers to about 110,000. I thought you had like 3,000. It was no, no, it was about 1,500, 1,500, and it gone up to about 100,000 in a matter of four days because of that stinking red ribbon video. And Facebook Live, so this was this was four or five years ago, was was brand new. And we did a, fa you talked me into it. We were in a hotel in Houston, Texas, and I sat in, and I, uh, I remember, yeah. I remember I was wearing cheetah print. Purple hat, cheetah brand, purple hat. That should surprise nobody. But I remember that Facebook Live. We were so nervous. We weren't sure how to do it. We weren't sure how long do people does it take for people to come on here. Like, we knew nothing. And you pressed it, and you said, Oh, it says that you're alive. It says that you're alive. And I'm like, hi. And you were, you were like, I don't know. There's nobody on here. And then all of a sudden, it was like, 300 people and you went just like this you went <laughs> and I remembered my hair 
Speaking of that French braid tutorial, faux braid tutorial, that's what my hair was and I had it down in the side bun and I had on a cheetah print and a, and a blue jean jacket and there was like 300 people watching us on a live that quick and we, I, I mean, if you think about that, that's literally like walking into, I mean, a stage and having 300 people just all of a sudden, they're sitting right there going, okay, talk. It, it's kind of intimidating. But you gotta remember too, maybe not that first one, but just like Facebook has changed where, you know, you guys, and I, we've probably talked about this before, you guys, we actually have a pretty good uh, comparative percentage. Most Facebook pages, their people might see 2%. We're probably closer to 5%. You're not making that clear. 2% of the people that follow them. I'm sorry, yeah. So Melissa has, uh, I don't know, under, under 400,000 people that follow her. Well, well, most, anything could be under 400,000 people. I most, have I have right at 400,000. Most people have uh, about 2% of their audience that see anything that they post. We're a little bit better, and, and part of that's thanks to you guys because you engage, you comment, you share, and that yeah. makes a difference. And so probably more like 5% of people see, uh, see our stuff. But the same thing goes for the lives. It just changed. It, videos that used to put up, like yesterday, there was a great uh, faux bray tutorial, mm -hmm. Tutorial Tuesday. Any video Melissa would put up would easily get 100,000 views. I mean, that quick for, for nothing. And like yesterday, we were really pleased because I think that's had 30,000 views. Mm -hmm. It's just Facebook's changed, but the lives have changed too because there used to be thousands and thousands of people. Yeah. Seeing them. Uh, I mean, just, we have we have 574 stuff. people watching, 585 watching right now. Back in the day, yeah. there would be 1,200 people watching because more people were alerted. I just got an email, and I'm about to get back to what I was saying. I, I just got an email, check my email this morning, um, and I just got an email from a woman who was very kind, and she said, I watch you every morning. I'm just really shy, and I do not like to comment, but I just wanted to tell you, and then she told me about something that she that we had said on the show. Oh, she had watched Ozark and Good Girls and she wanted to let let us know. So I know that I know that she's watching. But I felt bad when I read her email because she is quiet and she's shy and she just enjoys watching. She will begin to see us less and less and less because Facebook knows if you don't comment and if you are not active they will not continue to show you our stuff. That's just how it works. But you know, that was none of this was my point. And you, it, you nerd out on it, I'm baby. Sorry. You nerd out. Like but, this is the sexiest conversation to you that we've ever had. Oh on yeah. It. <laughs> um, it's weird. Facebook doesn't like stalkers. Melissa, she does. I Facebook do. I prefer them. I it. prefer them. Um, what I was going to say, all of that was was in regards to how I looked this morning. Can we wrap it up though? I'm gonna say this, and then Tag, we will, David. Comment, share, then you'll keep seeing. Yeah, I, we just used to care so much about how we looked. I mean, we can't, not you, because you weren't really on all the Facebook lives, but I cared. I mean, I would do my hair, my makeup, and now I, I don't know. I like, I love that somebody just a moment ago said, um, "You guys have turned into a habit," and I think that's precious. Like, I love that. Thank you for saying that. But I've just gotten comfortable. Have I gotten too comfortable? I have. I have. I have. You have to ask yourself, <clears throat> if I had guests over to my house, like if I invited my pastor and his wife over for breakfast, would I wear this? Or you used to yes, be an example. I would. I would. Okay, let's find you somebody a, else. You do a lot of you do a lot of speaking. If I you, wouldn't wear this if, on stage. If you went now, now right now live, there's about six hundred people. By the end of the day on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, there'll be about thirty thousand people that at least watch some part of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you were going to speak to thirty thousand people, is this what you would like to wear? I wouldn't. I'd go buy something new. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Not only do I not buy anything new for y'all, day to day, depending on my mood, I don't even know if I'm wearing a bra or not. I mean, I know right now, but it's your you don't know that. <laughs> um, okay, well, you now you do. Stop. <laughs> um, but one of the things that we said this morning, we got tickled, today is Wednesday. As you know, if you watch Rise and Ranky, today is We're Here For You Wednesday. We do have some comments, I mean, some, well, actually some comments too. And questions that have come in. And tell them the comment you made before we started. 
Well, if we're going to do We're Here For You Wednesday, we're going to oh. be here for these So people. on, you know, we have a little different themes every day. Wednesday is We're Here For You Wednesday. You send in your questions. We can't answer difficult questions in our own life, but we can answer them in yours. I said, do you feel if we are here for you Wednesday, people are looking for us to some form of insight? Probably not really. It's really probably more entertainment. Mm. But <clears throat> should we put a little, a little bit more into oh, yeah. the appearance? For sure. For sure. So. so anyway, all of that Facebook stuff to say, um, you guys, I, I don't understand why some people are on Facebook lockdown and other people are not on Facebook lockdown. <laughs> My girlfriends and I, and I, I shouldn't say girlfriends, we don't hang out on the weekends, but there are a couple of influencers that I know for a fact some of you watch and listen to, um, and I've had C.A. Muljavik um, on the podcast, I've done podcasts with Woe Suzanne, I mean, these are women that we talk and we, we touch base and we check in with each other, and <clears throat> one of them in particular has felt the lockdown, and another one that lives in Dallas has felt the lockdown, others have not felt the lockdown, so I don't know why that is. I don't know, have any idea. Um, but for my people, I, I got locked down on Facebook. And so a lot of people just don't see my stuff. So being active, sharing this, commenting, that's always really hey, nice. Speaking of... I don't how, know why you just pointed to yourself. I didn't. Somebody said Aggies, and so I gave him my... <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, no, so uh, speaking of that, uh, I can't look at you. That short. Actually, I like Roll Tide. Uh, not as well as I am, but um, so speaking of, I like Facebook, rolls and tide. After you have rolls, you need to put tide on whatever you had on. Um, hey, speaking of Facebook and not being kind to people, uh, what happened? What happened to Jen yesterday? Well, it's like yesterday, my uh, Jen Hatmaker, um, who lots of you follow her, the day of her book release. The day of her book release. Her book comes out that day. And she could not do a Facebook Live. Yesterday. That was yesterday. It just decided, nah, we're not going to let you do a Facebook Live. That's not a good idea for us today. Are you kidding? Like, she has been doing Facebook Lives every single day. That's one of the things that she has been doing in order to launch her book, Fierce Free, Full of Fire, which, by the way, is amazing. Um, that's what she's been doing every day. The day of the book release no, I'm not going to. Yesterday, we got on here to do our, our Facebook Live. We always use David's phone, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't let him. They said, no, no, no more lives from your phone. So now we have to use my phone, which is not a big deal. But, I mean, can you imagine you work so hard for the day of your book release? So she had to do it on Instagram instead, and then she had to download Instagram and just put it up on Facebook so people could see it. It's just, it's just a pain. It's but sure. don't talk bad about Facebook. I swear they're watching, and they're listening, and they will act accordingly. Okay? So if our children disappear in the night, <laughs> they're at Facebook. All right, here we go. We're here for you Wednesday. We have got one, two, three, four, five questions that have come in. Some of them are super quick and easy, and we're going to get right to them. Oh, Lori Stewart says, say the name of the book slower. Was that too fast? Fierce, free, and full of fire. Fierce. Fierce. Free and full of fire. What, I say what fierce, fierce and free and full of fire. What? What? Uh, Melissa actually did a great podcast on Jen's podcast last week. I did. Where she interviewed Jen. So go check out For the Love podcast. Melissa interviews Jen. Talks all about I, I will tell you, the, if y'all ever think to yourself, how do they know when to just start snapping and singing? 26 years. 26 years of marriage will do that to you. But when he starts just randomly singing... Um, he does that at our house all the time. The other day he was loading the dishwasher and he was singing, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, let me love you, Shaka Khan. Let me love you, that's all I want to do. Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, love it for you, Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan, da, da. I don't know what's going on there. Um, here we go. This question is from Linda. And here is what she says. Listen, Linda. Listen, Linda. 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 Listen, Linda. <laughs> I'm going to explain this one more time to you, Linda. Hi, Melissa. I thought you were an only child, but I think you mentioned on one of your shows that you have a sister. <clears throat> Love, Rise and Radke. And yes, I eat breakfast with you guys every morning. Okay. Linda, here we go. First of all, Linda, you got a little something on your Linda, that, that's literally oatmeal coming out of your mouth, and it's disgusting. Okay. Um, 
Uh, a lot of people have asked me this question and I have answered it a couple of different times, but who knows if you missed it and that's uh, totally fine. I was an only child. I grew up in a home with me and my mama and my daddy and that is it. Um, interestingly enough, I grew up in the home I'm sitting in right now. This was my childhood home. We bought it from my parents and when they went to go build their dream home, we bought this and we remodeled it because David didn't want to um, have sex in the same parents room my parents have sex in. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> So we remodeled it and it's fun. But, um, so it's just interesting when I, when my daughter goes to her room and slams her door, I'm like, I've heard that before. It won't bother me because I slammed that same door. I was an only child until I was about 21 years old. And at 21, I had already gotten married to David and we had moved to Nashville. So when I say that I had lived my life growing up alone with no brothers or sisters, I was, I was an only child for 21 years. When I got married and I moved off, my parents ended up, ended up um, raising uh, what was their great niece, but all, but all the family tree doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is they took her in when she was six months old and she's still there. And I tell her that all the time. So you were an only child. I was an only child. You're not an only adult. That's a great way to put it. Because my, uh, and now she's my sister. I love her like a sister. We are very different and we are 21 years apart in age, but I love her, love her dearly. And, um, but I still say I'm an only child because I was. Does that make any sense to anybody else? Like if anybody else has gone through that, what do you call yourself? Sometimes I will say to people, <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm an only child. And she will say, you know, I'm literally standing right here. <laughs> I can hear you. Say you're the only child that I'm right here. Um, but I love Mallory very, very much. She is a sister to me now, but she wasn't when I was growing up. But they are mom and they are dad. Um, so, yeah. So, that is the story there. And occasionally, I will still refer to myself as an only child, especially when it comes to my raising and my being home and, and growing up. Okay? <clears throat> Anything else? Happy Earth Day. <laughs> is it Earth Day? It's Earth Day. You know what? You our know Earth what? is doing so good. Our Earth is so happy about the Our Earth is so the happy Earth about is. the corona. Have y'all seen the And pictures? I'm happy for our Earth. Have you seen the pictures of like, you know, shots of skylines and, oh, the river, was that in uh, Italy, somewhere I think in Italy or something where the river normally is just like murky and, oh, I'm sure. and it's clear and so... This is not a question so much as it is a, it is a, an email that was sent to us and I just wanted to tell you about it because I don't think you've seen the email. So I don't like to, for him to read over my shoulder. But um, a, a woman, her name was Deborah. Uh, she took a screenshot of you and I, I think it was last week sometime. And because I had on my Rosemary Beach shirt and we were laughing and like, give a funny like laugh pose, David. <laughs> and she took that screen. And she took that screen. Insane. <clears throat> She took that screenshot and she sent it to us because she thought it was really cute. And I, I wrote her back and I said, oh, thank you so much for that. That's really precious. Even though like 18 of my 20 chins were showing. But whatever, Deborah. Um, but anyway, she wrote back and she said, I was the one from your Christmas show that won the air fryer. Oh. And she said, I got it and I absolutely love it. And I think of y'all every time I use it and I just smile. And I think of my air fryer every time that I use it and I smile too because I'm usually cooking bacon in it. So of course I'm smiling, right? <clears throat> but just so y'all know, when we tell you that we will mail you something, like if I said, hey, does anybody want these glasses? Anybody want them? I'll mail them to you. I'm never gonna mail them. They're gonna get lost in the bottom of my car. I'm gonna that's have great not, intentions. That's not always true. I'm gonna have great intentions, but they're never gonna get mailed, okay? But when I tell you that you just want an air fryer, I'm gonna send it. Okay, so she got an air fryer. <clears throat> okay. Like when Sharon Miller screenshot the mug photos, which are sitting in my office. We really like those. Yes, we really like those. Well, They're sitting in my office. Didn't one of them make me kind of look crazy? Yeah. yeah, but so does your driver's license. So anyway, that's what I wanted to tell y'all. I thought that was really sweet. Here we go. This is a question for David. This came in. This is from Andrea, who lives in Spokane. Spokane. Lay it on me, Spokane. Andrea. Spokane. This question is for David. Uh, and I had to narrow it down because she got a little ch chatty, chatty, chatty. Okay, I had to narrow it down. This question is for David. My husband is a wonderful man and I love him big time. 
I don't know why, okay. In fact, we have four kids and we had fun working on all of them, LOL. I don't know, I didn't need that. Did you Did you feel like you needed that? Like working on creating No, them? Yeah. yeah, I think that's exactly what she meant. They had a good time. That's okay. for our late night show. Okay, so Andrea has great sex. <laughs> um, I know that with four kids, you'd think we had divided up the chores around the house, but please know that our kids are still very young. So it takes both he and I fully committed to the upkeep of the house and the kids and the finances. That's a lot. But he refuses to help around the house. Andrea, I am putting in, um, you, you didn't say I couldn't put in dramatics, and so I will. But he refuses to help around the house. Well, not refuses. He's too nice for that. And then this is where it gets eerily similar. He just sort of disappears or runs an errand or falls asleep or goes to the bathroom, and then I love this, or goes to the bathroom for an afternoon. Do you help that's around the house, that's David? Gonna the that's gonna be a hip, that's a hemorrhoid waiting to happen. And maybe he rightfully deserves hemorrhoids. Do you help around the house, David? And if so, what tips can you give me to motivate my man? Well, uh, do you, first of all, let's ask the first, do you help around the house, David? I do help around the house. Do I, should I help around the house more? I'm a gape. I'm a gape. I'm a gape. <laughs> this is not a replay from yesterday. Um, I do help around the house. I should help around the house more. I will tell you one thing, though. Um, it's different with us uh, working together because although we have offices, we are always at the house. So that kind of adds a, a weird element. I will tell you something, though, a long time ago, I was gonna say, even when we didn't have money, <laughs> we have no money. Um, I have always made it. A, a long, did you say a long time ago when we had money? I said a long time when we didn't. A long time ago when we didn't have money. So, like as in yesterday afternoon at three o'clock. <laughs> um, for I mean for for, year, for <laughs> years, uh, we have put a priority on having somebody come in every other week to clean. Uh, I mean, if it's something that I've got to work extra, do extra, generate some kind of extra income. Um, neither one of us love cleaning. Neither one of us love doing housework. Uh, we also believe in a uh, economy that you give people jobs and those type of things. And so that's always been a big priority. So I have, I need to do more. I have always helped facilitate the acquire. Beth said David is digging. And Beth Bramer has never been more right about a comment that she's ever posted on here than right now. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. What do you mean? I don't know where you're going with this, David. But I'm anxious to see. Oh, yeah. Rocco colored a picture in Tara. I was supposed to say it to you. I don't know where it's at. <laughs> but probably in my car. You want him to make you a new one? To it. Tara, you know how to email me. You're in my class. Go for it, David. So anyway, I, I do help. I need to help more. I have uh, always facilitated having someone come in and help uh, clean. <laughs> and you talked about finances. Now, here's the thing about the household duties. Oh, God. She's going to laugh. She's never oh, she's never go. touched our fine. Well, oh, we she's never touched our finances. I've touched our finances. Uh, uh, I've touched uh, our finances. Uh, 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 uh. I've touched our finances. I touch <laughs> them every single night at 1030. I touch my finances for an hour every single night at 1030, okay? So I'm touching them. I'm touching them real good. <laughs> but I will say, man, when you have, can you imagine, we have uh, little chore charts uh, for the kids, and they actually, the kids do a bunch around the house. I mean, we have to stay on top of them to do it. But can you imagine having four kids? No, I cannot. You literally would have to do nothing. And Andrea, so, it's sucking for you right now, but imagine the day when it won't suck. Imagine the day when you will be sit back, drinking your quarantine. Also, I noticed it was, and I'm going to have to give a little uh, thank you to, to Meg, I believe it was, for reminding me. How many, this is a good quote. This is a good quote. Christy Klein. How many times has David said, I need to help more. If we took a drink every time David Radke said, I need to help more. <laughs> now listen, here's the deal. David is not good at helping around the house. He's not. 
And I'm just going to be totally honest because y'all see him on here every morning and y'all adore him. And you know I adore him. You know I always clean your pipes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, la I laugh. I'm not, I'm not coming back. <laughs> I can't believe you just said <laughs> I laugh when I'm trying to divert. That's what I do. That's what I do. She's right there. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god. <clears throat> okay, mm. listen to me. He's not great helping around the house. He's not. Remy has chores. Rocco has chores. But David is not a lot of help. And the thing is, David is not at all. Probably like Andrew is saying, he doesn't lay on his recliner with his feet kicked up around us while we while we work. He doesn't. But I think a lot like this man, you just go somewhere. You're like, oh, I needed to run by the church and do 10 Hail Marys. I mean, I, I don't know where you're at. I do have to tip my hat. I don't know if she said his name. I do have to tip my hat. That's pretty... I, I got to kick him a shout out. What? For doing that. I mean, he's nice, but he just... Andrea's husband? Oh, yeah. She, go, she says he's nice. He just... Where does he go? <laughs> Where does he go? So hey, I gotta I gotta uh, give some credit to Meg. I believe it was. Um, Andrea? He did just say he did Andrea. just say that Trisha. Earl. And, Andrea, Andrea, mm -hmm. Andrea. I don't know. She Andrea lives in Sp Spokane. Okay. Uh, I know a re refrigerator repair man that works in Spokane. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! So he might have a handyman that. That is handy. not true, David. Did <laughs> that was ever... Meg. That was Meg. Did y'all? Did she say that? Meg said, "Isn't don't you know a handyman in?" I had forgotten about that. Meg just reminded me of my own television show. Uh, remember the episode where I I pretend to be what was I doing, David? I am the sexy glow like um Sofia de Vergara. And I do my voice sexy. And then David is like a television. I said. Oh, TV repairman. A TV, TV repairman. Yeah, TV repairman. Remember that episode on, on the Radkeys? Were y'all watching? Were y'all watching? I thought for that you, fleeting second I on the television put show? The, I and I said. put the tape in oh, the. Oh, hello, Mr. TV repairman. <laughs> I love it when you come to my room and check on my tape. <laughs> <laughs> and he was from Spokane. So I bet. Uh, I bet we can maybe find that a. Andrea. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe he's waiting outside the door for you to put on your Sofia Vergara clothes, and probably he is. And he's got on like a TV repairman outfit, and he wants to come in and check your tapes. He's clearly checked them four other times, and she said she had fun. All right. <clears throat> anyway, you were of absolutely no help to that sweet woman. None whatsoever. I made her feel less alone. What what does a woman have to do to get to get you to help and to get him to help? Like, what do we have to do? This is Sophia Vergara outfit would do best. Well, if I can squeeze into it, I'll be glad to put it out. I love how you're <laughs> like this. Like, like, I don't know what I got to do to get sexier on here, but I'll try. <laughs> okay, hi, Radkeys. I am pretty new to you guys, and I just heard on Rocco and Remy's show, they have a live that they do in the afternoons at 3. It's like okay. curtain caps. Um, that your kids are adopted. I was blown away. They look like you both and act like you both. How is that even possible? But my question is this. How did you tell your children they were adopted and has it ever affected them negatively? Meaning, have they ever been upset about it or even angry? Do you guys ever consider adopting again? I think adding to the Radkeys would make all of us so happy. A new fan and a huge fan. Emily Joy from Alexandria, Louisiana. I hope Joy wasn't her last name. I wouldn't think so. Emily Joy. I don't know. So, that's a lot of questions. How did we tell our children they are adopted? Were they affected negatively by it? Would we consider adopting again? And it would make everybody happy if we would. Look, raise your hand if it wouldn't make you happy if we adopted again. Really? David, I can't keep bending down and standing back up, you know. Well, little kids, you got to get down on the floor. I don't want to do all that. Would you adopt but, again, David? Well, I think uh, I think adopting I think adopting like like a fourteen year old. Uh huh. Actually, sixteen year old. That way, they could drive around. Okay, now he's just could. looking for more people to help in our house. <laughs> no, I mean we have no plans to adopt <clears throat> adopt anymore. We are really happy. That being said, 
I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like to ever go. Nope, absolutely not. You know. I think we're of the age where it's okay to say nope, absolutely not. We are getting older, Dave. Your parents were older than us. True. Um, but you know, most likely. our children are adopted. If y'all didn't know that, welcome to the party. Um, but it is it is amazing. Uh, it is amazing that Remy does kind of favor my, you know, doesn't mm -hmm. look exactly like me, but favors my coloring and that kind of stuff. She's got a lot of uh, Melissa as far as like Melissa spit her out of her mouth as far as her <laughs> attitude and all that kind of, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Um, Rocco has all my coloring and acts like his daddy. So, I mean, I think it's... Than, he's, he's laid back, but he's, David, he's better than all of us. Yeah, David is very, very nice. Rocco's got him beat. Rocco is the nicest person I've ever met. I mean, he's obnoxious, a little 11-year-old boy. Don't get me wrong. He's very kind. But um, way kinder than Remy. Way. Way. But um, you know how we told our kids? Uh, to answer her question, no, it has never affected them negatively. We answer any and all questions, which come at the oddest times. We'll just be having dinner one night, and they'll be like, hey, can you tell me this such and such about my birth mom? And we always answer. Um <clears throat> Nothing is off limits. Um, we, we respect those. I, I mean, I don't mean to sound cliche, but those to us are kind of holy moments. Those are holy moments. That's when everything stops and we just we just give them our full attention. We don't answer questions about adoption while we're scrolling through our phone. Absolutely not. We give those kids our full attention. We answer anything they want to know. We are an open book because we don't want them scared or fearful or paranoid about any of it. Um, and so, uh, this, so no, it has never affected them negatively. And I like to think it's because of that. The second thing is we talk about their birth moms like freaking <clears throat> superheroes, if you, if mainly you, because they are. If you haven't, if you haven't read Melissa's book, Eat Cake, Be Brave, it's, it's not about uh, adoption. Cake. <laughs> it's, well, it's not about cake. It's not about adoption, but there is a, a chapter in there that, uh, that's kind of a <coughs> letter to Remy's birth mom. Yeah, they, we, we talk about those women like they are champs. We call them, we put a miss in front of their name um, to kind of just so that they will hold uh, honor, and, honor respect. and respect. So they call them, you know, Miss Danielle or whatever their names are. Uh, that's actually not her name, by the way. Um, that was called that in the book. That's not her name. I wanted to keep her private. So, um, Anyway, so yeah, and the, and the way that we told them was we took the, the Disney movie Tarzan, the little cartoon Tarzan, and they began watching that one when they were really, really young. Um, and I, we stopped the screen one time after the, uh, the gorilla had gone in and found Tarzan and then took him home. And I said, do you know what she's doing with Tarzan? And Remy was like, stealing him? And I said, no, she's adopting him. That's what she's doing, she's adopting him. And so that's how we begin to explain what adoption is and how that you can grow up around people that are not your blood, but they're, they're your family. And an interesting note to tie in all of this together, uh, I would have never even considered adoption, but guess who told me how adoption was wonderful? Actually, here's what her words were. Um, <clears throat> when I was, uh, right after we had buried our son, Elisha, um, my parents and my sister Mallory came down to check on us. Mallory at this point was maybe seven, eight years old, something like that. Nine, uh, 10. Maybe not, yeah. And she said, Mama, you ought to tell Melissa about the joys of adoption. <laughs> and that was the first time adoption ever came into my mind as a possibility for us. And it was my sister who was adopted into my family. Um, so isn't that precious how that works out? But um, And somebody's asking like <laughs> what age they were. And are they blood siblings? We, they are not, two different birth moms. We, I don't know if we have like an age. We. They never found out they were adopted, if that makes sense. Like, even when they were babies, holding them in our arms, we might say something or whatever. You know what I mean? It was just always, it it was always talked about. And then one time, I don't know, maybe two years old or something, uh, we used the, the Tarzan analogy. So we never... They we, never we never sat them down and revealed it. Yeah. That was just never the approach we wanted to take. Um, I can remember, even at a young age, I would be doing Remy's hair and I would say... Your hair looks like Miss Danielle's, you know, and, and again, that is not her name. I'm just, I don't do that when I'm in public, for her privacy. I call her Miss Danielle. Um, your hair looks like Miss Danielle's or your eyes look like, and so I just always did that. Um, <clears throat> so it just worked out beautifully for us. Is it an open adoption? Yes. Have they ever met their birth parents? No. Will you allow them to meet their birth parents? Um... Absolutely, when they are old enough to decide they want to and drive themselves there. Of course, we would drive them, but what I mean is when they're old enough to 
um, for that to be a, a connection that they can figure out. Does that make sense? Am I saying that right? There you go. So there's all your questions. And I think that's every child and every family, as far as as far as that aspect, they mm -hmm. have they have uh, seen pictures of their birth moms, and we've talked about that. And you know, we we actually have some <coughs> we actually have some very good friends that theirs was was such an open adoption that the birth mother would come and stay with them for a while, even as the child was growing up. There was a constant constant thing it kind of works that way for us just because of where they're at in their lives and all oh that kind of good stuff. <clears throat> sorry baby i don't want to interrupt you but i did want i don't want to forget so let me tell you all this little story really quick you'll love this so remy remy tried to tell it yesterday or rocco remy or rocco did yesterday on the show and it they don't tell stories great but um here's what happened a couple of months ago a couple of months ago one of our children was asking to see pictures of their birth mom i think it was rocco can I see pictures? I think, yeah. And so I had pictures. I have pictures of both birth moms and I have them tucked away and private where the kids could never just come across them, right? Because I wanted that to be special. So he started asking. And so I said, um, yes. And I said, so here's what we're gonna do. Rocco, listen to me. <clears throat> Remy, you are gonna leave the room. And Rocco, I am gonna show you pictures of your birth mom. And that is going to be, those are going to be your pictures after that. And if you choose to show them to Remy, you can. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. So Remy, will you please give Rocco some respect and some privacy? And she said, yes, ma'am. She left the room. I showed them to him. He was grinning from ear to ear. And he goes, you're right. She is beautiful. I said, she is beautiful. Of course she is. I told you she was. And I said, now it's up to you. Do you want to show them to Remy? And of course he was like, yeah. So he came in, Remy came in. And she looked at him and she said, she's very pretty, Rocco. She handed him back to Rocco. <clears throat> so then she said, okay, then I think I wanna see mine. I said, okay. So Rocco, would you step out and give Remy some privacy? He said, yes, ma'am. So I showed him to Remy <clears throat> and I said, do you see it, Remy? Do you see how you look like her? And she said, yes. Rocco always asks a million questions. Remy never does. Remy, it takes days for her to process things. She said, yes. And she, I said, okay, now would you like to show them to Rocco? And she said, yes, but let's find a picture online of somebody really like hideous and we'll show him that. <laughs> we Googled, we Googled what not to do with your makeup and we found a picture of a woman. I mean, it probably was completely Photoshopped. She had drawn eyebrows up to here. She, I mean, it was, it was, it was the worst makeup job you've ever seen in your life. I mean, it was a what not, it was a makeup fail. <clears throat> Rocco came in and he came in very quietly like this. And Remy said, Rocco, I want you to see what my birth mom looks like. And he goes, okay, Remy, thank you for letting me see her. And Remy goes, you're welcome. And she held it out and, <laughs> and Rocco went just like this, he went, <clears throat> he went, I don't feel like she looks like you. <laughs> but, but he would not, he wouldn't show anything on his face like negative. I don't like, feel like I she don't, looks I like you. Like so anyway, it was precious. We ended up showing real pictures. But um, yeah, so. And he laughed. He wasn't even mad. He okay, y'all. The last question for today. The last question for today is a quickie and it's hilarious. Whatever happened to the dungeon room with the black wall? Okay, it wasn't black, first of all, Charlotte from Charlotte. Find out about that. Whatever happened to the dungeon room with the black wall? Will you guys ever go back in there? I didn't hate it, but Melissa did. Will you go back in there when the quarantine is over? Charlotte from Charlotte, yes, that's real, is what she did, how she ended it. Um, we actually do have a room over in our offices that we that we did this live from every single day up until quarantine and then when our kids were home we found ourselves over here more so now we're doing it in our kitchen but yeah we have a room over there and it's got a really dark wall and i did end up hating it but i didn't want to ask david to repaint it because he was already so mad about it the first time and i disagreed with the color to be i know david you've said that a thousand times um you know what it reminds me of don't you what the red door What's the red door? Oh, God. <laughs> Tell that on another day. Um, anyway, Pope David's room. That's right. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know if we're going to go back over there or not. Do you think we will ever? I don't know. I like we did We did it over there uh, kind of in the kitchen area a few times. I, like I, actually, I actually like that. It's just brighter and livelier, I think, in the morning, you yeah. know. Hey, set your alerts. I'm going live this afternoon with a streamer episode. I'm going to review two things that I 
I'm going to need you to not watch or maybe to watch. I don't know. You'll have to check it out and see. Make sure alerts are on so that you'll know when I go live. I think I'm going to do that around 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Um, and then um, that's it for today. We love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Tomorrow is Thursday. Will we be here? <laughs> Who knows? Um, but probably. Hey, if you didn't check out <laughs> Melissa's two, tutorial Tuesday yesterday, the faux braid, uh, go check that out. All right. Um, that's it. Have a wonderful Wednesday, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Love you. Bye. See you guys.